What's up YouTube? I've been using Casa for my Bitcoin multi-sig for the last two years and it's been getting pretty expensive. Over the last two years, I've spent $4,000 using Casa's three of five multi-sig. And so this year I made a resolution basically to investigate what the other options are for my Bitcoin multi-sig needs. And so in this video today, I'm gonna be going through Unchained Capital software called Caravan that allows you to expand your multi-sig from the normal two of three that's offered on Unchained Capital to a three of five or something more comparable to what I'm already getting over at Casa. So in this demo, I'm going to be setting up a two of three multi-sig using Caravan. And then towards the end of the video, I'll give you some of my thoughts on how easy the process was and any next steps I might be taking with regard to my multi-sig. So let's just go ahead and jump into Caravan here. You can find Caravan on Unchained Capital's GitHub, and I'll have a link to it down in the description. So once you're on this page, you can start using Caravan from the browser, or you can go to Unchained Capital's GitHub and download the source code to your machine for yourself. I think downloading the source code is going to be a little bit more technical. So for the sake of this video, I'm just going to be using Caravan from the browser. You can see over here on the right hand side of the screen the supported devices that work with Caravan, including both models of the Trezor, the Ledger Nano S, the Ledger Nano X, and all three models of the cold card. Notably missing from this list is the Ledger Nano S Plus, which I was going to use for this demo. But since it hasn't been tested with Caravan, I'm going to skip the Ledger Nano S Plus for now and just use my Ledger Nano X. So the first thing we're going to do when we want to set up one of these wallets is go ahead and just click on wallet. The first thing that we're going to look at here is this quorum box over on the right. And this is where we're going to decide what the configuration of our multi-sig is going to be. So by default, and what we're going to do in this video is a two of three multi-sig, but just be aware that you could do a three of five multi-sig. It's just going to take a little bit longer and you'll have to set up obviously five wallets instead of the three that we're going to be doing in this video. And you can extend this all the way up to a seven of seven multi-sig. I don't recommend that you do that. If you were going to use seven devices, I'd maybe do a four of seven or a five of seven. But again, for the sake of this video, we're going to be doing a two of three multi-sig. The first device that we're going to be using is the Ledger Nano X. The second device we'll use is the Trezor Model T. And the third device we're going to use is the Cold Card Mark IV. If you had already set up a wallet on Caravan and not just setting this up from scratch, you would go ahead and click on Import Wallet Configuration. But since we're setting this up from scratch, we're obviously not going to do that. And we're going to start to connect some of these wallets. So before you do anything with this, you're going to want to make sure that when you're on Unchained Capital GitHub right here, if you're on Brave or if you're on some other website, make sure your shields are down. If you turn shields down when you're in the middle of this configuration, it'll just delete all the things that you were working on. I don't know what the deal is here. Treasure just sucks, I guess. I don't know. And sure, I have pop ups enabled for the site. So let's go ahead and click up on Brave and turn down the shields. Shields are down. Oh, <laughs> now it wipes out my wallet configuration. That's nuts. That was actually so trash. Make sure your pop-up locker is off. Make sure your shields are down before you do anything else on this page. Uh, and now back to our regularly scheduled programming. Let's go ahead and click on Ledger first. So it's asking us to please plug in and unlock our Ledger and then open the Bitcoin app. So let's go ahead and do just that. Our Ledger here, we'll put in our pins and then we will open the Bitcoin app. It says Bitcoin is ready. So now if we go back to the computer, we can click on import extended public key. We're seeing here, Nano X and we'll click on connect. And now it's showing us our extended public key for this ledger device that I'm hopefully going to blur out because I do actually use this ledger device. And then it's gonna show us a bit 32 path right here, this M4500. It's telling us we're going to need this for later. So let's go ahead and write that down. All right, so I've written down that bit 32 path and now I can disconnect the ledger. I'm going to go ahead and connect this Trezor Model T to my computer. Back on the computer, the next step we're going to take is do the exact same thing for the Trezor. So we'll click on Trezor here in the drop down, and we'll click on Import Extended Public Key here, making sure that we have selected the correct device. I'm using a Trezor Model T in this case, so let's go ahead and click on Import Extended Public Key. It's gonna reopen our Trezor here, and just right away you can see that it worked. So we'll click on Allow Once for the session here on Trezor, and click on Export. So that was very quick. We can see our Extended Public Key here for our Trezor Model T, and our BIP32 path that we're gonna write down. Next, let's go ahead and do the cold card Mark IV. My cold card Mark IV is completely air gapped, so I'm gonna show you what it's like to do the air gapped version of this. If you were just plugging in your cold card Mark IV via USB-C, the process would be exactly the same as what we just followed for the Trezor and the Ledger. Let's go ahead and click on select method and we'll click on cold card. And it looks like actually it's not even giving us an option to connect the cold card, it's just asking us to upload the XPUB. So we can see here, we're going to go to settings, multi-sig wallets, XPUB, Port XPUB, enter zero for the account, and then upload the JSON file from the cold card. So let's go ahead and jump over to the cold card. I've got my external battery here. I'm gonna turn that on and connect it to my device. I'm gonna enter my pin here. All right, so we've logged into our cold cards here. We're going to go to settings. 
and then multi-sig wallets, and then export XPUB. I'm gonna click OK to continue. Account number zero. It's telling us that our XPUB file was written to the ccxp95d blah 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 dot JSON file. So I'm gonna go ahead and accept that. And now I'm going to eject my SD card, plug it over here into my Mac, and now head back to the computer. So here on the SD card, I have that JSON file that was generated as my multi-sig XPUB. So I can go ahead and drag that right here into the Caravan wallet. And as soon as I dragged and dropped it, it took me to this next screen where you should be seeing all of the extended public keys, except for the one that I actually use. So next we're gonna come down here to download wallet details. And once we click on this, it's going to generate a JSON file that we can store on our desktops. I recommend that you digitally back up this file using something like 1Pass password or whatever your cloud backup service of choice is. If we go ahead and open this file, we can take a look at what it looks like. And you can compare this file to what we are seeing over here on the caravan screen. Basically, it's showing the name of your multi-sig wallet, the address type of the multi-sig wallet, the network that the multi-sig wallet is using, what the quorum of the multi-sig wallet is. So in this case, a two of three. And then it's showing the extended public keys for every single wallet that we just used to create this multi-sig. And so without this map of which keys created the multi-sig, you can't afford to lose any of the keys, if that makes sense. So if you have this one map file and two of your three keys, you can recover your funds. If you have no map, then you're going to need three of your three keys to recover the funds. And this gets even worse in larger multi-sigs, right? So if you have a three of five multi-sig, if you have the one map and the three keys, you can recover the funds. But if you lose the map, now you need five of the five keys to recover your funds, which if you did a four of seven or a four of 10 or some larger multi-sig, this map becomes really, really important because you're probably going to have a hard time keeping track of that many other keys. So again, keep this file in a safe place. Feel free to back it up wherever you need to back it up. The only information that's in here really is this XPUB for all of your wallets, which is, you know, sensitive privacy information that you wouldn't want necessarily leak, but it's not the end of the world. Someone can't steal your funds with just this map. They do obviously need the private signatures of all of the wallets or a quorum of the wallets that we created this multi-sig with. If you guys have any questions about this part of the video or how multi-sig works in general, please leave a comment down below. I know that I said a bunch of crazy words that nobody understands like XPUB and Quorum, and I really want everyone to understand this part of the video because it's probably the most important part of setting up a multi-sig. So back here, after we've downloaded our wallet details here, we can go ahead and click on confirm. And so now in this browser window, we have our multi-sig wallet that we just set up on Caravan. However, if we click on clear wallet here, it's going to remove Remove the wallet configuration from this browser setting. And if you don't have that map that we just talked about, you're going to need all three of your wallets or all N of your wallets, all five of your wallets, all seven of your wallets, all 10 of your wallets to recreate this multi-sig that we just created if you click on clear wallet here. So just to show you what happens, I'm gonna click on clear wallet. We're back to the screen that we just you know, filled out all of this information for. But luckily, now that I have this map JSON file that we just downloaded, I can click on import wallet configuration and I can upload this map.json file. And so let's go ahead and just click on open. Now it's showing that exact same wallet that we just had and I can click on confirm. And so now we're right back to where we just were with an empty multi-sig wallet basically. So now let's go ahead and fund this empty wallet. So to receive some Bitcoin, we can click on the receive tab here in the middle of the screen. And now if we want to receive Bitcoin to this address, we can obviously scan the QR code or we can copy the QR code and I am going to be using Strike to fund this Bitcoin wallet. So I'm gonna open up Strike. I'm going to to click on pay. I'm going to click on the QR code. I'm going to paste the address and I'm going to send $10 of Bitcoin over to this address. And I'm going to click on confirm. So it's saying payment successful. And so now if we come back here, maybe click on refresh. And it says deposit received, a new address should now be available for deposit. So if we go back to addresses, we can see that we have an unconfirmed about $10 of Bitcoin. And if we wanna track this transaction, we can go ahead and click on this address here, open up mempool.space, plop the address into mempool.spaces explorer, and we can see that the transaction is still unconfirmed. Looks like it won't get confirmed for the next 20 minutes. So I'm gonna be you know, sitting here doing jack basically until then. And then when it finally does get totally confirmed, 
confirmed in this multi-sig wallet, I will show you guys how to go ahead and send this Bitcoin out of this wallet and you know back to Strike or back to whatever other Bitcoin wallet that you would be using. All right, guys, so I just played chess for 20 minutes and lost all those games and now I'm not in a good mood. All right, guys, so I just refreshed my wallet and the Bitcoin has settled in the wallet. So now let's go ahead and do a tutorial on how to send Bitcoin out of this multi-sig wallet that we created here on Caravan. So obviously the first thing we're going to do is click on send over here on the right side of the screen and we're going to find an address that we can send this Bitcoin to. I'm going to choose my Casa multi-sig vault that I pulled up here on my iPhone. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on copy and then I'm going to paste the multi-sig address here into the sending field on Caravan. And I'm going to send the max amount of Bitcoin, all of the Bitcoin that we can send out of this wallet at whatever this current fee rate is. Let's drop the fee rate down a little bit so we're not paying so much in fees. Looks like we can get confirmed two blocks from now for about two sats per byte. So let's go ahead and drop this all the way down to two, recalculate our max and go ahead and preview the transaction. So now we are ready to officially sign our transaction. This is the point where we're going to need two of our three hardware wallets that we set this whole thing up with. So let's go ahead and click on sign transaction. And the first key that I'm going to select here is going to be the Ledger Nano X. So it's asking us now to plug in our Ledger Nano X. So let's do exactly that. We'll go ahead and put in our pin here and we will open up the Bitcoin app. So now if I come back onto the PC and I click on sign, we can come back to the ledger and now review the output here on our ledger device. That Bitcoin amount looks correct. That address looks correct and I'm going to accept that transaction. And I'm gonna click on accept and send. And so now as soon as I hit accept and send there on the ledger, the PC is showing us that this signature was imported from the first ledger device. And now let's go ahead and do our second one with the cold card Mark IV. So if we've never signed a Bitcoin transaction from this multi-sig using the cold card before, we need to actually click on download cold card config and we need to load this onto our SD cards. And now that we've loaded that onto the SD card, we can come back here unplug the SD card from the computer and put the SD card back into the cold card. Now that we have that text file on the SD card, we can come down here to settings. We can click on multi-sig wallets. We can click on import from file. And we can see that there's only one multi-sig text file on the SD card that we can pick from. So we're going to go ahead and select that multi-sig wallet, which is our multi-sig wallet that we obviously just created here on Caravan, and we can approve. Now that we've imported that text file multi-sig to the cold card, the cold card is going to recognize that multi-sig. And so now when we download partially signed Bitcoin transactions that are coming from this Caravan multi-sig, we're going to be able to sign them using the cold card. So we're going to go ahead and download this partially signed Bitcoin transaction, and we're going to put it right onto our SD card that we can load into the cold card. And so now we will take out the SD card from the computer and we'll pop this SD card back into the cold card and we will turn the battery back back on. We're going to come here to the top to ready to sign. The cold card will recognize our partially signed Bitcoin transaction. And then we can verify that this information here is correct. We can see that the address looks correct and that the amount looks correct. So we'll go ahead and click on check mark. And now our updated PSBT file is stored on the cold card. And it looks like it's called 1845 my multi sig wallet part PSBT. So let's go ahead and click on check mark. Now if we eject the SD card, we can throw the SD card back into our Max. And now back on the computer, we can see that 1845 my multi-sig wallet dot part right here. And we can just drag this right here into Unchained Capital. And so now we have two signatures here from both of our hardware wallets that we used to set up this multi-sig. We didn't need the Trezor because again, this is a two of three multi-sig. And so now we can scroll down here and we haven't created the transaction yet. We've just proved basically that we are in fact the owner of this wallet. And so now we can broadcast this transaction to the Bitcoin network so that it will show up in our CASA multi-sigs. So let's go ahead and click on broadcast transaction. Transaction has successfully broadcast. And now we can click on return. So I waited a little while there. I hit refresh and now there's no more Bitcoin in the wallet. We've successfully sent the Bitcoin off to our CASA multi-sig. And if we head over to the CASA multi-sig, we can click on this unconfirmed transaction and see that this is the transaction that we just sent. We can copy the transaction ID. We can come back to our computers and we can put that transaction ID into mempool.space. And we can see that it was first seen a minute ago and that it should be confirmed in about a minute when this next block here gets mined. Hopefully this video was helpful for some of you guys who are looking at alternatives to a CASA multi-sig in this upcoming year. For anyone that after seeing 
this, thinks that this whole process is way too complicated, I would actually point you back to Casa. Casa's onboarding experience is very simple. And in my opinion, their mobile app is actually the reason that you should be paying money for a multi-sig because while these other solutions do exist and we've proven that you know they're workable and that we know how to use them, the very simple user experience of having that multi-sig access available on your iPhone really whenever you need it is I think the reason to still pay for Casa. On the other hand, $2,000 a year is a really expensive fee to pay for something that like how much more utility are you really getting out of all of this? There is definitely something to be said for your peace of mind and all of that. But if you can just make yourself comfortable with softwares like Caravan that we just used, why are you really spending all of that money on Casa? I'm personally not totally sold on Caravan yet. I think it's possible that just using stock Unchained Capital that I did a video about a few months ago that I'll have linked to up in the cards might be a better solution for most people. That being said, I am going to be continuing to check out some of these different multi-sig softwares. The next one that I have on my list is going to be Nunchuck, and then I'm going to be checking out Spectre Desktop. I've heard really great things about both of those softwares, and I think the user experience might be even better than Caravan, so definitely not committing to anything yet, but I am going to be continuing to look for multi-sig alternatives to Casa because I think that fee that they charge every year is actually really high. Comment down below if you got stuck at any point or if you were confused by something that I said in the video. I do still respond to all the comments. Check out this video over here to learn more about Casa versus Unchained Capital, and check out this playlist over here to learn more about multi-sig. I love you all. See you next week.